Hey everyone, this is Nick Larovere, TotalStoryTeller.com, director and producer, and I want to share what I've learned with you. Alright everyone, today we're coming from my buddy Joe's studio, where I'm going to be talking to him today about, um, you know, directing your first movie, getting your movie distributed, financing, a lot of common questions that filmmakers have about making feature films. Uh, we're going to go into a lot of topics. It should be pretty interesting. I've worked with Joe for a long time, and I know he has a lot of valuable information to share. So Joe is a writer, director. He just released his film, feature film Expo, which is now on Netflix. He's directed four feature films. He wrote two of the four, and he's currently developing his next film. This guy's always doing something. He particularly enjoys watching and making action and sci-fi movies, basically movies where people are beating each other up. You can follow him on Instagram, Joseph underscore Mba, which is M-B-A-H, Joseph underscore Mba. So full disclosure, I've worked with Joe quite a bit. Um, he's a really great collaborator of mine. Uh, we directed our first feature film together, in fact, and I did help him produce his movie Expo, which is now on Netflix. So... Joe, tell us a little bit about you. Um, how did you get started in filmmaking? You have a very interesting background. All right, so, um, wow. Uh, each time I get asked this, I'm like, man, do I do I take it all the way back? Or should I, you know, should I just cut it to the middle? So I might just cut it to the middle this time. I will say, though, uh, I am originally from uh, Nigeria. Um, I was born in Nigeria, and... I moved to the United States when I was 11 years old. I moved here and then I turned 12 like a month later, which was cool. It's cool to have my birthday I here thought in you America. Had, I thought you you got here a little later than that. I, for some reason, I had the number 14 in my mind, so I'm not, I'm not sure why. But no, that I, was was that when you moved from New York? Um, or was that later? Yeah, I think at fifteen, I okay. Well, close to like sixteen. That's I moved why away I have from that New York. Yeah, late the yeah. older number in mind. Yep. So from Nigeria to New York City, uh, culture shock and all of that stuff um, is really cool. You know what I find really cool about about filmmaking and filmmakers is that. Uh, a lot of the stories that you choose to tell and what ends up in your in your movies has a lot to do with just your experiences in life, your life yeah. you know um so just having been in Nigeria and having experienced the stuff that I experienced and then uh coming to America and not in and not just going to a kind of diverse place but more like a really, really diverse place like New York oh, yeah, City. New York, yeah. Yeah, it, it you know, it just it opened mm. me up a lot to just different cultures. As opposed cultures. to being in the same culture, exactly. the same practices and yes. the same traditions forever. So I, I was in New York for five years and now was uh, sh like a big shock wave of just, yeah. you know, observing, absor absorbing information from, you know, different people. Right. Yeah informative years too yes yeah yeah, yeah. um you know which is a lot different if you were like five and you moved to a totally different country it's it, almost like it didn't happen exactly probably. exactly no the, it was definitely the the years where you i you know you soak up a lot of information so but okay so moving from that um yeah, i like how, when, did, when did you start getting interested in film Stuff. So I I started getting interested in in film stuff Out when of the womb. yeah oh I was born a filmmaker no um so I was like I started thinking about this thing really and I realized that I have always been interested in the action genre of film since I was a baby. Like I, they had to surgically remove the camera from your hand because you came out of the womb. That's not supposed to be there. You know, well, let, let's not tell him about like, this. What's wrong with this baby? Um, no. Um, when I was when I was a kid, when I was in Nigeria, I watched a lot of um, action movies: Rambo, Terminator, uh, Jackie Chan, anything of that nature. You name it, I watched it. 
Um, and I, you know, will go outside and reenact it. And I thought I was Jackie oh, Chan. That's cool. And I, you know, <laughs> kicking kids in the neighborhood. I mean, they kicked back. We all we all thought we were Jackie Chan. But anyway, different story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was my interest in action movies. But as far as me becoming interested in, in the craft of filmmaking, I, I, I would say that I was about 17 years old when I actually discovered what filmmaking was. Um, Did you do something in school or that kind of you, you got to try something or, or what? Yeah, uh, so so how it came about is I had this really wonderful English teacher, and I wish I could remember her name. And I'm going to look That's her terrible. up so that I can I can start plugging her each time I have to tell the story, because my God, she was the most amazing English teacher I ever had. And I'm going to plug the school is Cathedral City High School in in Cathedral City, California. Um, because we moved from New York to California, um, and we lived there for a year, and that was my senior year in high school. Oh, funny. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Um, and then, so while we were there in California, uh, you know, it was it was kind of a weird thing. We were in New York. We were thinking about moving. We didn't quite know exactly where to move. My brother-in-law got a job in Palm Springs. He got there. He's like, yo, guys, this is an awesome place. We all came to visit, and we all stayed. And then flip a reverse of that. I I came to Arizona to go to college. I'm like, yo, guys, this is an awesome place. And everybody moved to Arizona. Uh, My family, we're we're all we're we're cool like that. Okay, so did you finish school? I did. Um, So I was in Cathedral City High School. That was my senior year in high school. My English teacher uh, said that she was tired. We were like studying point of view. Right. Um, that was like the whole lesson yeah. of that. And she was like, I'm tired of you guys providing boring book reports. Like this is your final. Basically, you guys suck. Let's uh, mix this up a little bit. Basically, basically in the most polite way. And she's like, it's your final project. Like get creative, go do something. And, you know, this is also that time of your life where. You know, you're being told hey, you got to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. And up to this point, I I was like certain that my path was uh, I was in the junior Air Force ROTC and I right, was going to finish right. that. I was going to go into the ROTC in college. And from there, I was going to join the Air Force. That was my path. It's like, that's what I want to do. I want to fly planes. And that's what I want to do. Um, but then. One day I came home from school and my mom stopped me randomly in the garage. It was hot. And she she's like, Joe, I get I get that you really want to go into the military, but that's not really what I see in your future. Hmm. Uh, she's like, I don't know exactly what this is, but because I mean, most moms were a lot would probably be like it. That's not a bad. That's not a bad way to go. Like in terms of all the different ways you could go, you know, that's not a bad one. Exactly. So that's interesting. Exactly. It's not like you. It was a dumb. No, path. It, it was. It so. was. It was. It was something. It was good. You know. But so yeah. for her to come and say, "Hey, I, I, I see you going here, and I see you have you, you're interested in it, but I just it does not feel like that's where you need to be going." And she just she just told me to think about it again, and I, I and she she said that. What I see you doing is something that comes to you naturally, something that you don't mm. necessarily have to struggle to pull out of you, uh, like from within. Yeah. Um. So I did some soul searching and, and and I thought about the different things that came to me naturally. And art, art was like the thing that I was like, okay, well, I know art runs in the family, both sides of the family. Mm. Um. But then I was like, okay, which, what type of art? And then I narrowed it down to, uh, I was music, and then I remembered Which that you do you do still still do some yes do I, some I, music I, now. Still, I, I still I I still do some music but it's just it's it's a hobby you know as a filmmakers but I mean find find a hobby just, and my just saying but it's, is it's pretty music. good work for uh, just a hobby FYI oh, just throwing thanks. that out there thanks because I heard my brother's music when he started his hobby and. That sounds like it sounded like a hobbyist's music. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Now I'm making music is awesome. No, it's. I'm not saying it sounds like that now. But when my brother started, also makes music. No, I'm just okay. saying when he started, it was like, it was like a uh, beep boop. Beep, okay, but okay. Beep, boop. Well, to to your I'm brother's exaggerating, defense, but my music when I started was bad. Okay, it was beep boop. Beep, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just it's art. You, you never. You, I don't care who you are. There is no yeah. genius in art. You, you start it, um, and then you... Other you know, than me. Right? Uh, other than Nick. Nick is a genius. I'm All right. humble tonight. Oh, yeah. So, so, um, so uh, moving forward with that. Uh, so, you know, English teacher said, do a project. My mom said, do soul searching. I remember that my older brother used to be an actor in New York. Huh. And he used to, I remember he used to come home with scripts every every other day and he would go to auditions. He actually booked some cool gigs. He was in a common music video. And he wasn't just like okay. a background extra and in, in, he was like a featured extra. Like he got to do cool. some cool stuff and yeah. he got to be in there with him. So I remember all this stuff and I remember that he would bring home scripts and, so you're like, you know. What, I'll give that a, a try. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, huh, what about, what about filmmaking I, and i didn't quite know exactly what I, but here's that's the, how it starts well here's that's the, how the addiction starts yeah but you know the interesting thing about it is like my mom said that it has to be something that comes to me naturally and no like up to this point i i didn't have any you official on this no yeah. yeah i just i just intuitively knew that i needed a script i needed a camera and i needed actors yeah. and i never up to that point i never really gave too much thought as to how movies were made or that even like yeah. real people made movies. So what I did is and I, they, even after you've been making films for how long now? What? Five, uh, five eight plus. I mean, what? Oh, uh, no, actually years. It's a in, in 12, any case, 12 years, 12 years. Yeah. Well, I've vastly underestimated. <laughs> uh, they still haven't told you that they surgically removed a camera from your arm. Exactly. And birth. Yep. That's right. That's right. I think there's some deeper secrets yeah, there. Yeah, something they're else trying is going to hide on. from you. Uh, I might be an alien. Okay. <laughs> you're definitely an alien. Yep. I, guys, <laughs> if you're listening to this, uh, you're being hypnotized. Hey, if the alien aliens powers. make good movies, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if the lizard people are hey, actually I, wearing I, human skin. As I'm long actually as the not are a good. filmmaker. I'm actually a spy. <laughs> I'm just here studying you human beings. Yeah. Okay. All right, it's so the cover. <laughs> yeah. So um anyway, so, let me move away from that and Yeah, I, I have another question. What do you think you've done differently that's allowed you to get where you are, right? Uh I guess to clarify, I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> like I think the the normal state for someone who's creative um and born in the US in, you know, typically born with a lot more privilege and we tend to behave a certain way that's not necessarily conducive to being productive and making films so that's the background on that question okay. anyway okay so <laughs> I, I i'm gonna try my best to answer it uh, as as clearly as possible and I, i'll break it down like this um being from nigeria definitely has a huge influence in my work ethic when it comes to really anything yeah uh, especially when it comes to 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 making movies because regardless of how cool movie making is you know coming from a nigerian and most people from a third world country would understand this specifically africans or in anyone third world country would understand is that if you don't come home and if you're not a doctor if you're not a lawyer if you're not a dentist, if you're not one of those, you know, prestigious career people, right? Uh, no one pays you any mind, right? And it's like in Nigeria, in, in Nigeria, in, or, yeah, or, yeah, in, in in our in our culture, you know, you're, you're basically nobody. Yeah, you're not a, if you're not, if you're not exactly, jobs. you know. Uh, hmm. So, so I already knew that. Okay, we, this career path. I know the potential it had. So here's the thing. So let's say I do movie making. I become famous and become rich and famous and stuff like that. 
then that's when it becomes cool. But if you kind of mediocre do it. Then no one ever knows who you are. Right, right. Yeah. And even people probably look at you as like, yeah, he just kind of does stuff he enjoys to do. Exactly. But he's, he's not a dentist. Even a, a dentist doesn't have notoriety. It's not like uh, even the local community knows who this person is. But at least they're a dentist. Exactly. And, but if you're a local filmmaker for your life, whole life, yeah. even if you make a living, like you're when, a, when you go to like family gatherings or, or when you hear your, like your parents talk about you, like they would talk about like, oh man, look, yeah, my, you know, talk about my cousins. Oh, he just graduated from this university and he's, he's now, he's now a medical doctor, you know? And then, he, and then my son, what's Joseph, Joe doing? He's, he's, he's hustling. <laughs> <laughs> so like uh, you know it just it's just how it is uh, so so what what it, it, it nigerian culture is a culture that that encourages and not just encourages but like actively pushes you to be the absolute best you can be in whatever you're doing and that's how i, I was able to sell this idea of filmmaking to to my dad is that i'm like, like you no, I'm gonna work my I'm butt like, off. I'm like, if if if, okay, and I'm not trying to sound racist when I say this, so I'm sorry <laughs> if, if it comes across racist, but you know, I'm like, I don't think anyone's gonna interpret it that way. Well, I'm I'm like, if <laughs> if if Americans can do it, why can't I? Is the question I ask my dad, right? So I'm like, I'm like, if, and that's why I said I don't want to sound I don't want to I don't want to just come across wrong but like basically why I sold it to him is is that if other people can do filmmaking and be successful at it why can I go in and be successful at it right, right? totally and and then he he was able to look at it from a different perspective so it, where it's no longer just a joke or a hobby thing it was right, it was like, now something to conquer you know so in our culture, like if you go into you're not go just do riding something, along on, yeah. on the lazy river, no. like going it's, somewhere. Maybe at some point I'll get somewhere. Ex- no. it is. It's like I have concrete goals. Yes, I know what I'm trying to aim for and see I'm making progress. Yes, which is a different thing entirely. Yeah. So it, like, I agree. My my mom, uh, my grandpa used to sing this song to my mom, and in, in the most weirdest ways, like. Anything you want to do, do it well. No one knows tomorrow. And, and what what what's really behind that is just is the whole culture where it's like, if you're gonna do something, be the best at it. Like in my in my country, there like this like in a classroom, right? They score you from like you're the top of the class and you're the bottom of the class, right? So you get your report card, and it would tell you on your report card clearly where your ranking in the class is, and Yep. If you better be the, if you're not the number one or the number two or the number three, don't come home. <laughs> is what that's how they that's how they that's how the culture is. So everybody is constantly fighting hard hmm. to be the number one. To say something else about Joe, he says that our culture is you know to work hard and be the best and everything. But he is legitimately one of the the people I know who complain complains the very least. And works the hardest for the longest amount of time, and you never hear a peep out of him. He'll just he'll just do the job. I th- I've known him for a few years now, and I've heard him complain. I think a total of three times, and that's not even an exaggeration. <laughs> I I didn't hear him complain a single time until I'd known him for I think over a year. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I think that's a movie we could all aspire to. You didn't just make your first movie, but when you made your first movie. What what were you thinking going into that? You know, it's like that's a big hurdle. Someone's like, I want to make a movie. That's uh, probably overwhelming. I only did it because I partnered with you. I I don't think I would have done it on my own, to be completely honest, because it's just like it's such a daunting thing to approach. It's like I don't even know where to start. Well, so so I I know we just finished talking about working hard and all of that stuff, right? Okay, so I I have this working hard stuff in the back of my mind and uh, you know I for for I would say for 6 years so 6 I spent 6 years of my filmmaking journey not actually making feature films right and here I I am saying that I want to I want to I want to be the best I can be and I found myself 
sitting around talking about the movie that I want to make and not actually just, making it. Just hoping for it, wishing. I, I was wishing for it. I was. I did crowdfunding. That failed. I tried to find investors. I got scammed. I, you know, I, oh, I tried. I tried all. I tried everything to try to quote unquote raise money to make this epic movie. In one, but in trying to do it one way, right? Like you trying one approach, yeah, it, over it, and over again, yeah, that didn't work. It was trying the the quote unquote normal things that you hear and enough that you to should tell do. yourself that you tried exactly. So I I was quote unquote trying to make a movie for six years, right? I mean, yeah. and don't get me wrong, in those six years, I was act- actively in the industry. I was actively working with people, meeting people, building relationships, right? So which which I'll get to later. Um, but yeah, I spent six years, mate. and then, and then funny thing is you turn around and you point fingers at the people that is just like you who are sitting around talking about the movies they want to make. And then one day I had to I ha- feel that way right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like one day I had to have, I, I had a wake up call out. I was like, Oh my God, Joe, you're just like the people that you're talking about. You haven't made a single movie. Yeah. And I was like, and I just, I, and I just had this moment where I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to pull it just off, but I'm it, just going to make it happen. Yeah. Right. And I, and I knew if I didn't move as quickly as I could, that I, there is going to be something that will come and say, the momentum will yes. Die. So I was determined I to make that. a movie. I just met Nick on, on set of another feature film. And um, I, he wants to make a movie. I want to make a movie. We were like, okay, why don't we just combine our resources and actually go make this movie? I was like, okay, I'm going to write the script. I thought we would have some more time when I got into this arrangement. I said, all right, awesome, let's do it. Uh, he already had the script. I had, I had the script written right. in six days. <laughs> I didn't. I was not aware of that. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, 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 that's... I knew, But I knew that that you had a script and – uh, and then when we started talking, we like kind of finalized it. Like, all right, we're going to do this thing. We're going to 50, 50 team up on it. Uh, I thought we would have more time to prepare and like talk about it and whatever. He, Joe's already locking down locations. He's like, Oh, I already have this and this person cast it. I'm like, Oh, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I just jumped on the train. So it's already speeding along. So there's no jumping off now. Yeah, no, that by the time I got, I, I reached out to you, I was already moving. Like, you know, but I I think better better that you were because I think, well maybe you, you weren't this way p- before, but I feel like you are now more inclined to be the, the sort of person who is just like go 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 let's just get it done let's just push forward push forward and and don't stop. Whereas I want to I want to sit back I want to plan everything out thoroughly I want to I want to line things out and I, I don't expect realistically that everything 100 percent will be planned but i like to i'm a planner yeah uh and so i'm like whoa which joe which which i think i think in all i don't think i would on my own that's why the movie wouldn't have been made because the first time i would have been like i'm just gonna plan until everything's just yeah and and in all honesty for your first movie there's nothing that would ever be perfect about it the perfect thing about your first movie is that you got it made yeah Uh, yeah so So yeah, I, I I had that moment. I made the decision. I wrote the script in six days, and I was like, okay. So I, <laughs> you're trying to get funding. No one wants to fund you. It's like the chicken and the egg. Who came first? Like yeah, you, 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 and it feels out. It felt that way about distribution too. Yeah, I remember. I think we had the same questions running through our mind with the guy that we were working for on his on his movie. Um, you know, he had done five or six movies right. distributed made money it, you know nothing huge but to us it was, it was huge yes. to us he was four or five steps ahead of us yep and we were think we were just like trying to pick his brain and anyone's we could and thinking how what what is the distribution what does that even mean right. i don't even know what that is like i get it's like the movie is out there in the universe but i, I we were so clueless we didn't know what we didn't know uh anyway what i'm getting at is it, with distribution and funding it felt the same way so it was yeah, like it, where do we even where do you where, get money where do you even start and and, and if, 
yeah, if people want you to have a distribution deal, whatever we thought that meant at the time, before you can get money, but the people who give you money want you to, you know, vice versa. It's yeah. catch-22. We're like, so this is impossible. All right. So, <laughs> so you know what? what? And I have to, I'm going to talk more in depth about this whole process because I, I it might it might help someone out there who's listening. So I made that call to make a movie, right? No one wants to give you money. Great. I was like, okay, how do I what, how do I actually do this then? Okay, well, I have a concept of kind of what I think this movie should be about. Then you know, me and Amber Thompson, who is the love of my life. Hi, Amber, if you're listening. Ooh. Uh we, you know, just waved. we 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 sat down and we're like, why don't we just write a movie based off of the resources that we currently have? Yep. So we made a list of all the locations we have for free, all the props, all the cars, and people that we have access who would be willing to do stuff and all of that stuff. And you, Nick, was you were one of them. And then I basically wrote the script based off all those things. So. We had a Mercedes that a friend owned, so we wrote Mercedes into nice. the movie, and we wrote the friends, we wrote that friend into the movie, and right. wrote his house into the movie. Everyone's vehicle was in the everybody's. Movie. Vehicle. My vehicle was in the movie s- several times. Yes, it was a hitman's vehicle. Yep. So we just wrote everything that we had into the movie, and that's what made it possible to actually make. So now instead of re- relying on money to get people get location do all of this stuff okay now we we have yeah. a good amount of it for free then once you have that and you're and you start moving and you actually start doing stuff then people start seeing what you're doing they're more likely they to come you. in and help and that's exactly what happened and so, i think it feels like okay this is actually this is actually happening it's like it's getting moving there's momentum I think that's motivating. It's like this; it's starting to feel more possible. We yeah. can do this. Yes, and so I have to give a, a big uh, shout out to our mutual friend Matt Matthew Goldring, uh, because uh, yeah, he was he a was he, he was a rock star in, in and he was very instrumental in actually making this movie our first movie happen, because not only did he act and in uh, and give up. You know, he's a dentist. A he's a full-time dentist. He's got and, a family. And he's, and he's got a, a family. Yeah. yeah. So, but he gave up a lot of his time to help us make this movie. And beyond that, he actually connect because we were already moving and doing stuff, he actually connected us to one of his friends, uh, Vince uh, Capone. Oh, yeah. Who happens to be an Emmy-nominated stunt coordinator. And we're trying to make an action movie, yeah. right? So we were able to get... We're, advice from we're him and, able to get advice and 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 on on making action that first time filmmakers would not have any idea on what the heck we're yeah. doing. So and just to, and frankly, uh, to my surprise, uh, but in hindsight, it makes sense. His un- just understanding of how to, uh, to tell a good story and how to make a movie, right? Like like what does a good story look like? He he's not a f- filmmaker per se, right? He he doesn't direct his own movies. But just from working in the industry and working on movies for a long time, you get a sense of what works, what doesn't, what a good story looks like. Even if you you couldn't write the script, you're, like I can make great comments on a, someone else's script. Like, okay, this doesn't work. This doesn't. We need to work on this and improve this. That's a lot easier said than done. But you've you've been around it long enough to understand what works. Yes. And what doesn't, and it, that's what he had and was able to offer us. Yep. Which was very cool. It, it was awesome. So. Me and Nick, we, 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 everything was locked down. We were ready to start shooting the movie. And, and then I was at home one day while we were getting ready to shoot. And I had this random idea. I was like, okay, why don't, I mean, it doesn't hurt. The least he, could, he would say is no. I mean, he's already helping with the stunts and stuff. Why don't we ask him to see if he has money or and there's anyone who's willing to help us out with some extra cash so that we can afford to feed people and do some, you I know. think that was toward, what, like maybe halfway through? We we we, we were we, a good amount. We, yeah, we we we, but we needed shot a couple a, of an scenes. infusion. We yeah, needed we, a cash infusion. We, we really did. We really did. So we, we were bleeding out. Yes, <laughs> like quickly, quickly. You know. So basically, they, you know, Vince Capone, and then uh, he went and talked to his friend, who happened to be an entertainment attorney. I don't know if she wants her name mentioned, uh, so I, I I apologize. You know who you are. Uh, 
they built basically both came together and said, hey, we'll help you guys, but we want to see something. So we were literally able to cut together the uh, dailies of what we we're already filming that's and right. send it to them. I and, forgot about that. Yeah, and they were able to like actually four or five scenes. Yeah, and yeah. so they were actually able to see the movie that they're gonna be putting their money into, and then eventually they were able to send us some money. And man, it was such sweet relief. I remember me and you going to the bank to go cash that check. Yeah, well, we. I mean, that was what we needed to finish. We yes. So that basically. was it. Was awesome. So that basically we went from. Six years of not making a movie to, oh my God, here we are. We're actually going to complete a movie, right? Yeah. We dashed to the finish line. We f- finished this movie. We started editing. I cut the first you know, draft. We looked at it and we're like, oh my God, this is a this piece is a of movie. crap. Well, it's no, it's actually, a movie though. No, no, no. Okay. I actually, no, no. Let's back up. Was. No. Our reaction Our was, first reaction was, was like, this oh, my awesome. God, this is great. We made a movie. Yeah. And then we showed it to someone. Uh, we started show- that, that was before. That was pre-normal people watching it. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Well, we started getting feedback, and, you know, that's you get have to deal with reality at that point, which well, is fine. The, the reality was like um, – I don't see the. I don't see what's the, the point? What's of, the point of this movie? What's the story? Who's the main character? What? Is it this guy or this guy or maybe it's that guy or the, or the fourth guy who seems like he could be a main character? Which uh, I don't know, Joe. I'm just spitballing here, but I think that might have something to do with the fact that you wrote the script, the script in six, in six days. days. Yes. Oh no, it has absolutely everything Is that to your do first with it. Feature film. Script, it was my, my first friend. feature film script. I don't. I didn't understand anything about story structure. There was no such thing there as was, the second draft. No, for this. There was, there, there, it was ongoing. It was ongoing changes as we shot. Actually, I just wrote uh, in an email on my newsletter um, about. Well, I've been talking about different aspects of making feature films. But one of them was different kinds of scheduling, right? Um, practically speaking, for people who have jobs, whatever. Mm-hmm. And one of them was basically what we did, and that's spreading it you know, basically two, three days, three, four days here and there when you can. You know, well, over a weekend, an extra day. The ben- one of the benefits of that is that you have the opportunity to stop and make adjustments as you go. You, you're learning. You're able to kind of process. Absolutely. experience you're able Absolutely. to edit the script so so well, specifically we were doing uh three days and then sometimes four days a week yeah the, well our, our dialogue type stuff maybe it was a, a day two days a weekend uh, but um like our bigger scenes with action and all mm-hmm. that we'd take three four days and yeah. knock a whole chunk out at once and I, and i have to say this to anyone out there that's thinking of making a movie and you want to make a big action movie, don't let no one tell you that you can't do it because though I didn't have any story structure or anything like that, we wrote action scenes and and the advice that we got. But it wasn't a lot, but when you're reading the script and you see aerial shot, and this is pre-drones, okay? This is before drones were actually a thing. So we had aerial shots, we had police car chases and, and stuff like that. And people were like, how are you going to pull this off? This is impossible. You should just write like a romantic comedy or something that's yeah. easy to pull off. We I got, was like, I just want you to give me feedback on the, like the actual story of the script. Don't worry about how I'm going to pull it off because, in honesty, those six years I spent not making a movie, I, ha- I was building relationships with people like a pilot with a helicopter, uh, a friend. That? Oh, okay. Yeah, like so specifically well, I that. I didn't know that that was the case with that guy. Oh yeah, no. So I I worked I, I worked as a cam up on a reality TV show, and they used him as their pilot to gotcha. shoot the aerial shots. And I was a cam up, and I got to talk to him. And we got a deal. And we got we <laughs> got a sweet nice. deal, and he was awesome. He was very accommodating. Basically, spent an hour up in the air and got the whole aerial shots. Well, we we maximized. The, yo, maximize. Maximize like, that hour. For real. You can't maximize an hour any more I than know we, that did. We, did. <laughs> we did. Um so we got police cart in into the movie, we got props, we got all this stuff from all you know, all this different wonderful people and collaborators that we, we both me and Nick have met and worked yeah. with. Well that's the thing is that movie wouldn't happen without relationships. Absolutely. I, that's why I think I think that 
obviously there's some amount of money that you're going to need. And as you progress and want to make better work, you're going to need more money. Yeah. It just is what it is. Uh, especially since the most talented people don't work for free. Yep. Um, but the, I think far and above the most valuable thing you could have is relationships because our, none of our movie would have happened without, without those relationship. relationships. Absolutely. Because there are so many people that came through for us for that film. Um, uh, not not all of them really knew us, right? Some of those were they were looking just for an opportunity, even if it was working for free, um, just like it was an opportunity for us. But um, just as many had, they didn't really have any good reason to be helping us, other than they were. The costs outweighed the, the benefits for them by far. I I would say, so I think it's important to foster relationships with people and and focus on that. Um. Uh, I think I'm, we'll move on. Um, what, so, given all that, all that about making your first movie, what would you tell people who are hesitant to take that step, or they f- they feel stuck like we were? Okay, when you feel stuck, it just means that you mentally don't want to do it. Because you know, you you, you like you. <laughs> You, you know fear you fear what's coming and <laughs> i say just tell yourself that you everything is going to be all right and take that dive because you, if you never do it you're never going to make your movie yeah. and and if you don't make that first movie you're not going to make the second one you're not going to make the third one you're going to just stay in the same spot so go make that first movie i don't care how crappy it is just go make it even if it's just a movie one guy and in one location for 120 minutes do it and make that movie and get it out and move on from there well said so for those who are ready or after hearing joe's encouragement decide that they're going to do it whether they're ready or not what do you think some pitfalls are they can avoid some some first timer mistakes Uh, not necessarily in like the technical area, I would say broadly speaking, some of the stuff we've talked about, like with your cinematography, I won't beat you over the head. No, it's if this is your first time and I I will be completely honest about this. Don't worry about none of that. I'm, I'm being completely honest about it. Like, don't worry about answer. I expected. Don't worry about your cinematography. Don't worry about your story. Don't worry about none of that because it doesn't matter how good you think your first movie is going to be. Chances are that it's not going to come out mm. as amazing as you're thinking. It. And the more time you spend thinking about it, the more time you're not actually doing it. Be stag- stagnating yes. yourself. Yeah, no, just... That's, that's just, a fair point. Just, I was going to say I think I might disagree with you, but then again, it's once you gain more experience, then you you start to understand how to balance it out, the planning and the the meticulousness with the just get it done yes but yeah i actually i I think i agree if it's your first time just get it done just get it done get it done get it done get it done and then like almost fly by the seat of your pants yeah absolutely (laughs) like just get it done and then and then the next time around look at what you've done and then see how you can then improve on it it's it's like it's like if if you're standing at the edge of a cliff and you're afraid to jump into the water, right? If you do it once, you know how it feels. And then it will be a little bit easier to yeah. jump the next time. Yeah. Yeah. So. And as long as you don't land on a rock at the bottom. Then you, yeah. Don't, yeah. If, if you don't die, then you keep making movies. But you're not going to die from making a movie. So no. um, don't have live bullets and guns on set, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yep. Then you'll be fine. So. Yeah, I mean, I I guess that kind of answers that question. One of the, I'll I'll go a little more into the weeds actually. So fly by the seat of your pants, but don't do everything just because it's cool. Can I? Sp- Ca- yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. Do. Okay. So yes, go make the movie. Yes, but still I mean, be, be careful. <laughs> it's contradictory. No, no. It's just it's just <laughs> while you're making the movie, while you've taken that jump. Just be careful. Self analyze. Yeah, you know, don't one, don't don't burn bridges. Two, 
uh, is, you know, if this is specifically for people making action movies, uh, safety, 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 yeah. safety. Chances are that you're not going to have the money to afford no, to get be. insurance or any of those yeah. stuff. So just be as safe as you possibly can. You know, uh, do everything. Yeah. And, and no, just... no movie, especially your, your first crappy movie, which may sound harsh, but let's face it, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, uh, no movie is worth somebody getting hurt. Um, or, you know, I mean, as obviously it's not worth anyone dying, but it's not even worth somebody breaking their ankle and having to miss out on two weeks of work. Yeah, that's just that's, all there just, is to just, it. Be careful. Be good to people. Get your movie done. Yeah. And make the next people. one. Yeah. One of the most common questions is, how do I get money for my movie? That's a, that's a big question that everyone has, including me, by the way. Uh, what do you think, Joe? What's best for the first time? Really, in reality, unless unless you get lucky, uh, and someone decides to give you a hundred thousand dollars to go make your first movie, which won't happen. Most likely, <laughs> your first movie, uh, unless again, if you maybe are a Kickstarter genius and you have like millions and millions of followers on social media or something like that. You're probably not gonna succeed at Kickstarter or or crowdfunding, right? I'll say, really, for your first movie, don't try to get funding. Figure out how you can make your first movie with the resources that you have available to you. Yeah. Like, come up with your concept, find the things that you have for free, and write your movie about that thing, and then go out and make it. Yeah. Make some extra money on the side for a little bit. Save it up. Yes, save save it up. Uh, it needs a little bit of money. You need, you, yeah, you, you're gonna need something. You can't. I mean, it's impossible to do it completely with no money. You need yeah. some money, but uh, don't let that also be a hindrance to actually going out and making the movie. Be like, oh, I'm still saving money. Uh, if you have like, I think you can start start making a movie with a thousand dollars. That's very possible. You can start. So even if you're just shooting weekends. I think you can survive a couple of weekends on your thousand dollar budget f- feeding people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get some food, some water. You can give people some gas money if needed, and mm-hmm. that'll that'll cover that to start. Since your first movie likely isn't going to be a masterpiece, and I can almost guarantee it won't be, um, then if if the cheaper your movie is and the quicker you get it done, the quicker you have your first. Uh, mistake in the can and you you will i mean if you treat people well and you know you have a have good shoots that are safe you're probably going to cherish those experiences you're going to enjoy shooting even though it's a challenge but um you also have now gained a ton of experience and you can look back at that you now have a product that you can at least attempt to get distribution for or sell um, you're going to feel a sense of accomplishment. You did something. You did something that took a lot of effort, um, which I think is, um, you know, respectable. And then you can move on and be like, okay, well, what's next? So an- another big question that people have is, how do I get my, once I made this movie, how do I get it out there and how do I make money with it, right? Because I, I can't continue to keep spending five grand or however much and make these little movies for forever right if, if you want to be a filmmaker for a living or you do it somewhat sustainably you got to make money so h- how the heck do you do that so joe what do you think about when someone is going to make their first movie and now they finished it they have this thing sitting on the shelf what do you think they should do the ultimate goal is you made your movie you don't want it to just end up on on youtube as just a regular upload, right? Movie graveyard. No, you don't want to do that because that does not, that would defeat the purpose of why you made your first movie. You made your first movie so that you can start establishing credibility as a filmmaker, right? Yeah, that does not help your credibility. Not at all. I will add that I think even if you don't think it is good enough to make any money and that it never will, I think that is not a good excuse to not try and go through this process, which he'll get into. Yes. So, for example, we, we made we made our movie. We got the feedback. We did we did all the stuff that we possibly can can do on that movie, right? 
Now we have a movie. The next thing that we did, and I tell all the filmmakers, first time filmmakers, cut your trailer, right? And then start looking around at other independent movies and where they are. So, you, you know, back, back then it was on Redbox that you would find independent movies. You find them on Netflix. You find them now it's more on Amazon Prime, YouTube Red, all this other place. So you start looking and then, you know, you find independent movies that are like your movie. And then you start looking at the companies that actually are distributing those independent movies, right? You get you, you get their names. And then really what we did and what I suggest everybody do is get an IMDb Pro account. Uh, it costs you like $20 a month or something like that. Um, and then get on there and search distributors. Like literally just type in yeah. distributors. You'll find and you will find... Time a lot of distributors and then what you should do is you start clicking at it's 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 Contact tedious them. work right but you got to do it you start looking at the distributors who are are carrying your type of movie right and then you just start sending them your trailer and make short and sweet short and sweet like yeah. one sentence don't send like, your horror movie no. to a, a documentary distributor no no <laughs> you like that you're just annoying them yeah like hey to whom you may concern my name is blah 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 i want to see if you're interested in acquiring this movie here's our trailer they click your period movie, period done they click your trailer if they like it they'll contact you and ask you for a screener then you send them your screener which you know, do all this through IMDb. Um, I'm sorry, Vimeo, because you can password protect all of it. Um, send them your screener, and then from there, if they like it, they will make you an offer. You know, and that's typically yeah. how it goes with distributors. And then it is as simple as that. It re- but it's not as. It, easy but it's as it re- yeah, it sounds simple, but it's not. And there's a lot more. It's just a lot of legwork. I mean, yeah, you're essentially cold calling them. You're I, cold I spent. Them. I spent. I'm not. Let me not try to exaggerate this, but I think I spent. A whole month emailing yeah. distributors. I mean, I, I emailed quite a few people. I think I probably sent a hundred emails. Yes, and yeah. and Joe sent far more than I did. Right, and it was like every day I was up, email, 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 and it was just and it's copy and pasting the same message, copy paste the same message over and over. And yeah, uh, guess what? It's it was the first movie. It was crap. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm it was not to, very good. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the masterpiece that we we're thinking that it was. So let's say we sent out 400 and something, 500 emails. Let's just say that the number let's of say responses 400 you get. and uh, <laughs> something of them said, heck no, or just flat out ignore no, the email. No, they don't even respond. Yeah. Yeah, 95% don't even respond. Exactly. I would say that uh, you should expect re- – uh, you should expect that the number of responses asking for a screener or offers – Will be proportionate to the quality of your, of your movie. movie. Absolutely, <laughs> and if you if you made a, a an awesome movie, then you know be prepared for more offers. Basically, we got a total of three offers, and it was it was between uh, two it, different deals. Basically, we were able to consider yes, and the third. Person that Third the, one was just after a little while was like actually I, I changed my, my mind. Offer. <laughs> yeah, I know that. We didn't even say anything. It wasn't like, like we were like, well, actually, you know, we're we're a little concerned about this part of the term, and and, like, and he was like, I don't want to deal with like, this. No. It was just like, like I'm doing you guys a favor. Never mind. I, I'm a, I'm gonna go do something else with my time. So oh. we 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 made the deal we made, and you know when we were making the deal, it was not a concern about how much money we're going to make. We were just happy that our movie was going to get professionally distributed and it was going to come out to the world. And that was our main concern. I mean, we're like, if he makes, if he happens to make a lot of money, awesome. If it doesn't, uh, then we know that the main goal of us making this movie have been accomplished. That we've we've gone from no, no film to a film that's been professionally distributed. Right. Yes. And so we yeah, we we went into the whole thing hoping for the best and planning for the worst in that we knew what our goal was, which was make a movie, get it distributed. Period. 
It was nothing about making X number of dollars or, or anything else like that or, or make a masterpiece. It was like, it's this daunting project. We've never done it. We can't, we can't even get enough info on, on how distribution works or what it even is. And we're just going to kind of muddle through it and just do our best and get the experience. So even though it wasn't a good movie, in my opinion, and it really didn't make any money and didn't make any money for us. We haven't seen a single dime and we never will. We, we still felt satisfied knowing we had accomplished our goal, which I think is, is great. And we, we always have that experience to uh, look back at and laugh about and uh, look at our movie and laugh about. Okay, so, <laughs> as well, and and read the I, reviews I, online and I laugh occasionally, about. I occasionally get on uh, uh, an Amazon Prime and and just when click. you're really feeling down yeah. and you're having a bad day, you just click go on it. IMDb and you read your the one review on there that just <laughs> cuts to your your bones. It's so brutal, but it's funny because it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it really is. Okay, so, um. I do have to say though that us making that movie put us on the radar of the more professional filmmakers who are around us to then look at us and say, "Oh, they're not just like everybody else." Okay. Just talks. Yeah, you wanna you wanna come have a meeting? Let's you know talk about. I mean, not nothing concrete ever came out of those meetings, but then it took us just from talk. People, everybody else who's talking to people who you can actually sit down and have meeting and actually to the credit well you've this, you've had stuff come out of it i, I would actually, say I, I, in, in I, fact i would say i think that if we had never done that movie so the person that we met uh the set we were working on the movie we we're working on where i met joe um he he then saw us go and make a feature film and down the road he he worked with Joe to, and Joe was able to direct two more movies. That's yeah. not nothing. No, no. I, yeah, I hope <laughs> I didn't say that it wasn't nothing. No, no. Just, I know you didn't. Yeah. But I'm saying like, it's it happened in a roundabout way, right? It's not like no, he, this it, guy it, ever hired you, so to speak, or it wasn't like. Well, I, you sat down. I, I let, let me let me let me say okay. Since we're talking about it, let me say briefly how it happened. He saw us working on his set then we went out and make it made a movie for the amount of money that we made it and we got distribution and he actually his distributors some tips too. yeah he gave us some he got like this whole imd pro thing i talked about he was the person we learned it from and then he actually sent our trailer to his distributor and his distributor was one of the people that said no <laughs> um but hey but you know he, he saw our that we were working hard our work ethic and he respected that and was willing to Take the you know, chance. Give us a little bit of help. Yes. So, but, so right after that, then I was able to, then he was talking about me to another gentleman who was interested in making a movie. And then I was going to make a movie with that gentleman. Things ended up not working out. Then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm back to where I started, where I'm trying to mm. raise money and do all this stuff. Okay, Joe, it's about time for you to, get up and go make your second movie right so got the second movie oh, done yeah. and then and, that happened and then <laughs> after we made the second movie while i'm still editing the second movie then the opportunity to direct those two other movies came about because now i have that really what it is is you have the credibility that okay it wasn't just a fluke the first time you know so right. these this this two results. this two guys can actually repeatedly make movies so maybe i might be able to trust them to go make this other movie and that's what happened yeah and i think that just goes to show uh i don't know how the saying goes but basically people who are busy get more opportunities because people see oh look this is a person who's busy and who is productive and getting stuff done i want to work with someone slash hire someone or partner someone with someone who is someone who is productive and gets stuff done. Absolutely. If you're not in and, and you have visibility when you're working and you're doing stuff, you're meeting new people, you're working with people, they're seeing how you work, you're building relationships. If you're not doing stuff, any even if it's anything at all, then none of that is happening. 
So yeah, by being busy, you get more opportunities. Those who are busy get more busy. That, no, that, that is a fact. That is a fact. So yeah, so I'll just add a quick note as far as the distribution goes. Um, you know, we're still learning. I'm still learning how all this stuff works in that the film industry landscape is constantly changing. Uh, and it's currently changing right now probably more than it ever has, uh, specifically with distribution. So, you know, any tips that we've given, they're not hard and fast rules, but they're also not totally out of date yet. (laughs) So, look, if you're trying to make a distribution deal with a distributor, get their info, send your trailer, and hopefully they ask for a screener. And um, it's it's just one possible route. There are a lot of interesting routes opening up. I'm not going to get into it right now, but... Um, just, you just have to find a way to make it work. You have to set a goal and then just find a way to get there anyway. That's right. Well, Joe, considering you have a movie on Netflix, which I've mentioned a few times now, did I, did I mention Joe has a movie on Netflix? I have a movie on Netflix. That's right. We both have the same movie on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. I'm sure people are wondering, how do you get a movie on Netflix? I know. Um... So are you rich? You're rich now, right? Oh man, I'm yeah. rolling. He actually dough. sent for me uh, with a limo, yeah. with a driver. We're, it was, we're, it was, in fact, it was a computer driver. It was driverless. Yeah, we're actually in my mansion right yeah. now. This, this is where this podcast we're in a is in a jacuzzi actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's so oh far. man. Okay, so Netflix. How do you how do you get a movie on Netflix? Hmm. There's never a straightforward path to anything in this filmmaking business, for sure. Uh, the movie that's on Netflix, by the way, is that second movie I was talking about. So we made our first you movie. Say the name? Expo. It's called Expo. Go watch it on Netflix. Expo. E X P O. People. Watch Look it up on Netflix. Watch it's the only Gen- one. Well, watch Genesis: Fall of the Crime Empire. For context. Yes, on <laughs> on Amazon Prime. Then go watch Expo on. On Netflix, we just want you to to see how bad Genesis is, and then watch Expo and be like, "This is the this best is movie better. ever, Oscar yes. worthy." No, because literally it was like, "Okay, we made the first movie. How do we then take everything that we've learned from making the first movie and improve on that and make a better movie?" Don't just do the same thing. Don't just do the same thing. So I was like, "Okay, I've proven that I can make a big action spectacle." Okay, Joe, now try to actually tell a story that. Yeah, you know, can kind of make sense. Trying to improve your storytelling yeah, and skills, just improve the overall craft. Script. Like you know, take time. Like actually, now plan out lighting, and you know what, what, how does the shot make an audience feel, and versus this and that. Like I actually, really paid attention to the craft this time with Expo. So we made Expo. I was editing. I spent I don't know probably eight months editing. The movie, it was the long, longest time spent in, in editing on a movie. I was able to get an actual composer, you know, like, you know, right. I, so I would definitely try to step up the game this time. And then I say this to myself, I'm like, how I know that I've made a better movie is that when I go back this time to look for distributors, one, I, oh, yeah. I was like, one, uh, not only would I get higher grade distributors, but I will get significantly more responses this time. That's how I'll know that I've done better, right? And yes, that's exactly what happened. So I remember so last looking time for a movie they believe that they can market and make and sell and make money. Exactly. So remember the first time I spent like a month sending out what three hundred and something. We total between the yeah. both of us like I mean, four hundred and something I think we emails. Actually contacted every single every, distributor yes that that would uh sell those kinds of movies yes okay that every distributor that exists for for expo i spent three days okay so i was like i went i picked the top distributors that i want to i want to contact right i contacted those and then by the time i was getting ready to contact the rest of them i already started getting responses back Asking for screeners. Actually, one distributor awesome. didn't want to see a screener, didn't care for it, just sent me a deal right away. Wow. It was like, I didn't know here's that. my offer. Let's make a deal. I was like, what's pretty cool. is going on? Okay. Well, then I'm like, all right. I think we've actually 
improved now, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that's a good feeling. It, it really is a good feeling coming from everybody telling you no to people actually wanting to people just ignoring you. Yeah. Okay. So we got the distributor, we made a better distribution deal and then, you know, pick the best distributor that we felt like we can partner with. And then how the movie ended up on Netflix was that ladies and gentlemen is a, what they call a <laughs> motor carriage. Uh, all right. Um, so our distributor basically took the trailer, took the movie. They created an incredible artwork. Like when I, I remember when me and Ember saw that artwork, we're like, Oh my God, this is awesome. Like compared to the artwork that we got from our first distributor. Yeah. No, we're the, like the, the, it seemed like the artist actually tried on this. No. Poster. Yeah, they did. And I, <laughs> I, I, I saw the multiple, like they, they spent a good amount of time going multiple drafts with this, the, whoever was making the poster until they got this draft that we used. I, I have a, a tangent, uh -huh. the, the guy who made the first poster for Genesis, you can tell how much time he spent on it. In fact, you can measure it by the second. <laughs> Because he posted a speed he painting, did. speed Photoshop <laughs> video on YouTube of it that we found somehow. So it's like this minute long video. It was like, doop, 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 drop this in, doop, trace. Oh, and did. there's a the movie poster, Look, folks. And that was exactly what our poster looked like. Uh, so it was like, wow, okay. So this is a Fiverr poster. Yeah, I really think, I think that's what that was. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, the Expo's poster was awesome. Um, and then our distributor then took it from there and just started doing their thing, pitching it to different people. Netflix and Redbox being one of those people that it pitched. Uh, Redbox said no. Netflix said no. Then Cable On Demand said yes. And then they picked it up, and then they gave us a release date. You know, basically one of those other things that I learned – is marketing this time i was like okay we're not going to rely on the distributor to market the movie i want to take on the marketing so i spent a good amount of time establishing relationship with uh pr and social media you know people and all of that stuff so basically when when the movie came out on on cable on demand we we're able to give it a solid push and then uh the distributor saw what was going on and then went back again to Netflix and tried again and then was like, Hey Netflix, mm. you know, this has been reviews were coming out from This is know, a hot movie. Like, you they, they, want they like, this movie. Right. They were they, they, well well okay. He, you know, he was like, Netflix, hey, please take another look at this movie. It's not a complete waste of your time. You know? Just it's, it, cable took it. This is the this is the traction that we have so far. This is what's going on. Just take another look at it. Right. That probably gave them enough push to be like, okay, there's there's some interest in this. Yeah. As opposed to them taking a hundred percent of the yeah, risk. Absolutely. Like, we don't know if this is gonna be do well whatsoever. Yes. So so, so they were they were like, okay, we'll, we'll take on your movie for X amount of months. We'll test it out and see how it does. And then if it does, you know, if the algorithm please, shows right. that the, if the film is performing successfully, then, then, then we perhaps are, we, we can do, make a deal. Exactly. So that's basically what happened. I was like, oh, for real? Okay. So then I'm like, okay, let, we're going to double down on the marketing once this movie hits yeah. Netflix. And we did. And, you know, I, I can tell like this is the, is the most viewed work that I've ever done. You know, based on how many how many people respond to it and how many people mm. reach out to me and all of this stuff, both the positive and the negative. If you look on IMDb, yeah, yeah okay, it's an independent movie. Yes, it has a lot of yeah, issues. Our second it's movie, good. fine, but it has the most amount of reviews. Okay, Genesis has what, user user reviews. User okay. reviews. These are real people yeah. watching it and, re and and reacting. Real to it. people real that people. aren't on the cast or crew. Exactly. FYI. It was like two hundred and dare you two hundred and something people have no li liked it, and then thirty eight oh, no people idea. have commented on it. So now I'm you have to go think about you got to think about what that actually means. Not everybody who watches a movie knows go. what IMDb is and cares enough to go over to a different website to go talk about it then i also have the people who have reached out to me on social media because 
you know, that, which is a different whole conversation when people like, you know, if people see a comment section where everybody hates a movie when, when you don't want to be that one person that actually likes the movie. So what happens is when people like the movie, they reach out to me personally on social huh. media and say, hey, I watched a movie. I enjoyed it. I understand it's a low budget movie, but you know, good job. Congratulations for making it Netflix. That's and then cool. they move on. So I'm like, okay, so genuinely a lot of people have seen yeah, that movie. And I'm, there's a difference in the reaction. Yeah, absolutely. Movie. Absolutely. So go watch Expo on, on Netflix and reach yep. out to me on social media. E X P O E X P O. And the, there's a little hourglass symbol in the upper right hand corner of your www.netflix.com tab, mm -hmm. and that will allow you to perform a search function, and nice. you can find any movie that, that in their entire catalog instantly. What incredible technology! That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, that tutorial is brought to you by Nick. Nick Larovier. So, what would if you were to give someone like three general tips for doing well, you know how to conduct themselves in entertainment industry, film industry? What would you say? One of them I think we hit on was relationships. Yeah, those are that's super important. Build good relationship with people. Be good to people. Um, very important. I would say that's the most that's the most important thing. Be nice to people. Be good to people. Build good, build good relationships. Second thing I would say is work hard, make movies, and keep making movies. Like do it, do it again, do it again. Grow from it. Do it again. Do it again, and keep and keep moving forward. And then the third thing I would say is. Yeah, uh, and I've heard other filmmakers say this, and is I I would highly recommend it. Find a hobby that's not filmmaking, that when things get tough, and and really stressful, that you can go do that helps you mm. get your mind off 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 of movie making and instead of feeling desperate and yes, and, and I was like yeah. So for me that that's on yourself. right. So for me that's that's. Uh, two things is mu making mu music, I'm getting swole, and working out, pumping iron, yeah, <laughs> with the bros, getting swole, swole, oh, you know, I'm not really that swole, but I, I work He's out. He's pretty swole, but as a side note, though, I actually do think going to the gym is a great outlet. I really, and, uh, it really is. Makes you have lots of energy, and then you can carry heavy the heavy things, as our friend Remy says, the Remy the grip. You can carry the heavy things for a lot longer. That's right, and um. Which is useful when you're working on set. So, Joe, to wrap this whole thing up, uh, thank you for sharing your experiences and your wisdom. Uh, do you have any inspiring words for those people, those filmmakers out there who are trying to make it happen despite, you know, life happening around them? People have jobs and families and all that. Yes, the thing I would tell you is that. It's not as bad as you think it is, and it's not as bad as you think it will be for you to actually pursue your dreams. And uh, the inspiration no thing there is something I'm I'm borrowing from Steve Harvey. Right, he he did this speech that went viral uh, probably three years ago or something like that, and he said that you you know. Most people are standing at the edge of the cliff with a parachute tucked away in their back and they're afraid to jump off the cliff. And that parachute is that gift that you've been given. And in this case, that's your filmmaking craft. You have this gift, you have this talent, but it's just tucked away in your back and you're standing at the edge of the cliff and you're watching other people soar through the sky on their parachute and you're just there. And it's, he said, until you jump off that cliff, you will never know if if you can fly, right? Basically. And he said, yeah, you would, when you do eventually jump off that cliff, you're going to get hurt. You're going to scrape up against some branches, but eventually your parachute will open up and you will soar. So that's the message that I want to share, share to everybody is, Stop standing at the edge of the cliff. Take that jump. It's going to hurt. You will fall. You, you will make a movie. You will get made fun of uh, and all of this stuff. But 
when it's all said and done, you will become a better filmmaker and eventually people will start calling you a genius. And <laughs> that's just the reality of it is that most there is no genius in filmmaking. I started by saying that, but there is no genius in filmmaking. It's just people who have practiced their craft over and over and over until they became geniuses. So go out and become your own genius. Very well said, Joe. Cool. Well, thanks for taking the time, man. No problem. All right. Peace out. Bye. Well, everyone, thanks for listening to the episode. I'm going to be doing these sporadically whenever I feel like it. If you liked this episode, it would be great if you subscribed wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube. If you have any suggestions for topics, feel free to reach out and let me know. That's it. Get out there and make great films. Peace out.